five of the top ten finishers of the
This morning, 25,000 athletes, led by some of the best professional runners in the world, take to the streets of New York for a 13.1 mile journey from Brooklyn's Prospect Park to Manhattan's Central Park. Sarah Hall, fresh off her American record setting performance in January, takes on an incredibly deep elite women's field. While two time Olympic medalist Galen Rupp leads a strong U.S. contingent on the men's side. And in the wheelchair division, Americans Daniel Romanchuk and Tatiana McFadden aim to defend the titles they won in 2019. The global pandemic forced the cancellation of this iconic event in 2020 and 2021, but this year it's back and stronger than ever. With kids racing 1,500 meters through Times Square, thousands of participants going the half marathon distance, and the best professional field ever assembled for racing glory. The United Airlines NYC half starts next. Oh, it's a beautiful Sunday morning here in New York City. Technically the first day of spring, and appropriately, we're beginning anew with the first United Airlines NYC half in three years. Good morning, everybody. Ryan Field alongside my colleague Sam Ryan and Olympian Kerry Tullifson, and we are thrilled to be here today to bring you the United Airlines NYC half, the first full-scale event the New Yorker runners have put on since the COVID pandemic began. We have 25,000 runners here this morning, including some of the best pros in the world, ready to tackle this 13.1 mile course. And Carrie, what a professional field we have here today. It's a phenomenal field and I am so excited. We have Sarah Hall. She's coming off of her American record in Houston and she is on fire and ready to race. Galen Rupp, everybody knows Galen Rupp. He's a two-time Olympic medalist and when he comes to the start line, he knows he's ready to put on a show. Tatiana McFadden and Daniel Romanchuk are defending champions from 2019. Both are super excited to have all 25,000 people in this race with them today. And speaking of the wheelchair races, just a couple of minutes ago, the men's wheelchair competition got underway. And Sam, lots of good competition in today's field. Mm -hmm. Daniel Romanchuk just spoke about him, the defending champ here. Daniel, just 23 years old, as he is so accomplished, one to keep an eye on. He has a gold and a bronze for the 2020 Paralympics. The 2018 became the youngest finisher in the history of the New York City Marathon wheelchair race. And 2019, the youngest winner in the Boston Marathon. And keep an eye on Rafael Botello also from Spain. Look at the age difference, though. 20 years his senior. He is a nine-time New York City Marathon competitor. Two names to keep an eye on, to be sure. In about two minutes after the men began, the women's wheelchair racers got on their way. And Sam, we have another strong field on the women's side as well. And the two names that stand out are Manuela Schar and Tatiana McFadden. Tatiana is the defending champ. Now, she told me just a couple of days ago she did take a little time off to regroup after the New York City Marathon last fall. That was a busy fall schedule. As for Manuela, how about this five medals from the Tokyo Paralympics? Really strong field. And Sam caught up with Tatiana McFadden on Friday. 2019 seemed like so long ago, but you're the defending champ. That was the last time we saw you race the United Airlines New York City half. Obviously, the race hasn't happened here. So what is it like to be back? It feels so good. It's going to be amazing to be out there having spectators and having all the 25,000 people racing behind us. So I think we're going to feel that excitement again, which we've missed for so long. It'll be my first race since last year. I took some wonderful deserved time off since the Paralympics and all the major marathons last year. And so I'm looking for a really competitive, uh, exciting race. It's a much shorter race, so I think it'll be a really quick one on Sunday. What makes New York City so special to you? I. What makes New York so special is that it's, I feel so electric. I mean, people are so excited. I think people are going to be emotional to be back racing again because it's been so long. A lot of virtual races have happened to keep people safe. And so I think people are really excited to see people and hear people's stories on Sunday, as well as getting out there and racing again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I am so excited to see this wheelchair competition get going here. You know, all of these ladies have had such a phenomenal year, but this in 2022 is the first big race of the season, and we have a great field today. Yes, we do, and we talked about a couple of guys on the men's side to keep an eye on as we take a look at the men's wheelchair race, also underway, beginning in 
Prospect Park out there in Brooklyn. And just such a great sight as the sun comes up here in New York City. Expecting a lot of spectators along the course today. And Daniel Romanchuk, certainly the odds on favorite here this morning, Sam. A couple of hills in the early going of this course in Prospect Park. So it is a bit of a hilly course to start and to finish. There are some areas of flat on the FDR drive, but yeah, some hills that they're going to encounter along the route. We're excited to have you along here on our live stream at abc7ny.com and on the ESPN app. In just a couple of moments, we're going to welcome in our audience from ABC7 here in New York. We'll have that for you here in just a matter of seconds. Mike and Tony, good morning to you. You're looking live at Daniel Romanchuk as the men's wheelchair division is underway. Began in Brooklyn's Prospect Park and will finish right here in Central Park where we are this morning. Perfect running weather today here in New York City. The first day of spring and the first United Airlines NYC half in three years. Calling the race with me today on the live stream, Sam Ryan, the Olympian, Kerry Tullison. We're thrilled to be here. And Sam, the depth of the professional field the New York Roadrunners has assembled here this morning is unprecedented. Just the strongest in a half marathon. We take a look at who we have today lining up for the United Airlines NYC have 22 Olympians here. We will see along the course and cover them. Six Paralympians. As far as national record holders, five of those. One of those, Sarah Hall. We'll get to her, a little more on her in just a bit. A recent record there and four former champs today we will see. And Carrie, we touched on her just now. One of the record holders, Sarah Hall, certainly a name to keep an eye on this morning. Oh, she is having such a great year already. She just broke the record, the American record. She ran 117.15. And guess what? She broke Molly Huddle's record, who is a three-time United Airlines NYC half champion. You know, Sarah Hall, right here, we're seeing her at the Houston half, is coming off of Tokyo. So we'll have to see how she's recovered from that. It was just two weeks ago, but Sanbari Tef Terefe, you guys need to watch her, Teferi, excuse me. She is a two-time Olympia. She's a 5K world record holder on the road. She's run 1429 over 5K, but she's run 105 over the half marathon. So good, Irene Cheptai, she's another one we have to keep our eye on. Those are the MasterCard women to watch. Speaking of the ladies, there they are, getting set to get going, and what kind of adrenaline rush is this right now? This is the biggest ad adrenaline rush. You know, right now when they're standing, they're thinking about their race strategy, they're feeling the nerves, and they're ready for that gun to go off. This is where you trust your training. It's all done. You know, this is the time when here they go. They're getting ready to go. And you just trust the process now. And they're off. How important is this to not get too far ahead of yourself here just coming out of the gate like this? Yeah, you know, I mean, it is such a big thing to get off the off the start line right you want to just get out get into your race and get going but you're also looking around you know sarah hall as i mentioned she ran 107 15. she's thinking about time but she's also thinking about learning how to run those hills learning how to get through the flats and then climb the hills on the way home as well and the hills this is what we see early are the hills in prospect park what a fun morning we have in store for you today. Runners and their families and friends can take the United Airlines NYC half with them everywhere with the United Airlines NYC half app. It's powered by Tata Consultancy Services, and it's available free of charge on iOS and Android. The app featuring on-map runner tracking, runner detail pages, pro athlete bios, and essential race day information. And of course, you can watch this race unfold on our abc7ny.com app, as well as on the ESPN app as well. Mike and Tony, that'll do it from here in Central Park. For now, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. We'll send it back to you in the studio. And now that we got all that morning show talk out of the way, we can welcome back to live stream. <laughs> back to the live action, back to the live racing. And Sam, you were talking about the hills, and we're seeing one here right here in the early going. Yeah, the first two miles of this United Airlines NYC half basically take you through Prospect Park in Brooklyn, rolling, hi rolling hills. But there is a steady incline as you just saw the runners make their way up this incline. 
At what point will we start to see some separation here this morning? All the ladies are, are bunched up here in the early going, which is to be expected coming out of the start line, Carrie. Yeah, you know, this course is interesting. You know, we talk a lot about the hills and the early part, and that's really where these athletes want to get through those. And then you're going to see some big racing happen. You know, I think there's some great, we're going to get way into all of their pedigree, but there's some great cross country athletes. And every time you have a great cross country runner come to New York City, they run the streets well because there's so many ups and downs. And so it's going to be exciting to see what happens, who's the first one to make the move. But right now, they look like they're just getting into the race, right? They're just feeling how how things are going today, maybe shaking through some kinks and, and letting their mind get into the race. Getting acclimated to the weather as well. The uh, 54 degrees at the start, we just checked the temperature. The weather conditions seem perfect right now. So getting acclimated to that, getting acclimated to, you know, your, your fellow runners as well and everybody's pace. And as we take a look at the female competitors this morning and Carrie we kind of touched on this earlier there's a couple of names here on this list to keep an eye out for today yeah Charlotte Purdue is one that we haven't mentioned yet she is a phenomenal runner she's run very fast over the marathon she's the second fastest marathoner for the for Britain but also yeah we have a full list of Americans that are here and I want to point out Annie Frisbee right there if you watched the marathon last fall you saw Annie leading the charge she is a young athlete she's from Minnesota so giving her a little <laughs> shout out there but a very good athlete but continue on I mean to top this next list Des Linden she is one of our top returners from 2019 a Boston Marathon champion runs so well in New York City and is excited to be back she's not always one that loves the half marathon distance but she loves what this race does for her she loves to compete and you know I mean we see all kinds of different athletes on this this page but I'm really excited to see Sarah Vaughn she is a mother of four she's a realtor and she is running faster than she ever has it's interesting you bring up Des Linden, not always a fan of the half. Uh, we saw her win the 2018 Boston Marathon. So when you're preparing for a marathon, we know a half is part of the training process, but how does your mindset differ going into a half as opposed to a full? Well, I mean, you obviously have to change that pace, right? You want to get going. You want to get off the line and get into that pace, which is kind of a hard one for true marathoners you know they have to switch gears a little bit this race is half that distance as yeah. we know but i think des linden is one of many in this race that really likes to see where their fitness is at and they like to compete no matter what when they are here new york roadrunners always brings in one of the best fields ever for this race and today it's possibly the best field so when i talked to des earlier this week she was so excited to be in this lineup Another name I'd like to mention there, Steph Bruce. A lot of people know Steph Bruce. She's had some ups and downs this year, and this is her retirement year. She's already said she's on the grit finale. So Steph Bruce there in the orange, giving her a big shout out. She's also a mother of two and, and just loves this sport and loves to compete. And she's really been documenting this on social media on her social pages as well. As we take a look at the women's field, the men's wheelchair race got a start at this morning. Daniel Romanchuk, the favorite. And it looks like he's got a healthy lead here in the early going. He is the defending champ at just 23 years young. You know, he's been around now. You feel like he should be older, but he is so young and he is so excited to be back here. He loves, he is very technical. So when he goes to any race, he likes to see the course. He likes to know where the potholes are. He likes to know the ups and downs. And, you know, he's just, he's a math guy. He's an engineering, you know, he's that engineering mind. So he really thinks and studies the course, studies his competition. And I really like this guy. He's such a true competitor. University of Illinois and some competitors from University of Illinois yeah. joining him along the course as well today. Making it look effortless. Healthy. It's like we have microphones right there on the wheels. <laughs> Unbelievable. Back here with the live look at the women and there's Sarah Hall and Sam caught up with Sarah a couple days ago. Sarah, first of all, congratulations. The American women's half marathon record. You're coming off that just two months ago. Um, from that to coming into here and Tokyo in between, can you sum up the last few months? Oh, it's been an exciting last few months. It feels so good to have racing fully back to normal capacity and especially here in New York City. It's one of my favorite places to race. I've had a lot of my best moments of my career here, but this race in the United Airlines New York City half is actually the only New York Road Runners event I haven't run. So I'm really excited to take part in it on Sunday. 
You talk about your history here in New York City and just the energy of the crowd back at capacity. What do you expect on Sunday? Oh man, I can't wait to run through Times Square. I can't wait to have the, the New York City crowds that we've been used to having. And uh, my last race here was the Mini 10K where I won in a sprint finish. It was so exciting having people out at Central Park and, and the masses behind us for one of the first times. And so I can't wait to experience that again. The U.S. women's half marathon record was in Houston. This course, obviously, New York City, a lot different. What do you expect from the course? Yeah, I'm really excited actually for this course. It undulates a lot, so it's, it's really just a chance to compete and you're not as focused on time as I was in Houston, which I'm actually really looking forward to because I really love to compete similar to the mini 10K where you're always up or down, but you're, you're more focused on the race itself and getting to just get the most out of yourself with your competitors. Yeah, you talk about the competitors. What a strong field going into this and you, you know that. So how much do you feed off of that? Oh, huge. Yeah, I really, this is an amazing field. A lot of women I really respect. I'm, I'm excited just to be flying along with them on such a beautiful morning. The weather looks like it's going to be incredible and, and um, just pushing each other to our best races. I, it really helps me to have people pushing me like I'm not a time trialer that just wants to go out by myself. So I really look forward to that. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah Hall, you know, we've mentioned some mothers out there. She is a mother of she is a mother of four and she is so fun to watch. She's so talented. She can run every race. But can I just tell you, this woman is someone that has mastered recovery. You know, she races so much. We're looking at her right here. She's won over the mile distance, the 10K distance, the 5K distance, the half marathon distance, the marathon distance, and yet she'll race back to back to back. And so I really like what Sarah Hall has had to say. She studies this course like we, we heard, but she loves to run here. And she's run everything from that Fifth Avenue mile, the dash to the finish line, 5K on up. So really, really a strong athlete. She has eight national titles to her name. Ran our American record breaking 107.15 half marathon at the Houston half back in January. Did so on the same course as her husband and coach Ryan Hall, who broke the men's record 15 years ago. So all in the family. Sam, what other takeaways did you have from your conversation with Sarah? You know, really, she talked about the field and the strength of the field. And I think we really need to, and this is something we'll talk about throughout the day, but really the strength of just the American women and, and the this is the really the golden age of women's distance running in the United States. Five of the top 10 finishers at the 2021 TCS New York City Marathon, American women. And uh, it's it's you know, you, you see the strength in it and you see it out here today as well. I think we're seeing a lot of different groups training together, but also, you know, there's so many even talking about Rome. Roman Chuck, you know, he has these young wheelchair athletes coming to run with him, and that's what we're seeing in America and across the world. You know, people are training together and thinking bigger and better. And as we watch the ladies compete, once again, a reminder, we'll be joining our audience on ABC7 in New York. Do a quick cut in. Welcome in that audience as we watch the United Airlines NYC half unfold here on the live stream at ABC, ABC7NY.com and on the ESPN app. Thank you, Tony. You're looking live at the women's field underway. They started in Brooklyn's Prospect Park, making their way to the finish line here in Central Park, which is where we are, Ryan Field, alongside Kerry Tullifson and Sam Ryan. And here are the men as they are about to get underway. And Kerry, who's a couple of fellas to keep an eye on here this morning? Oh, we have another strong field here. But, you know, I'm really excited to see Frank Lara here right in the middle. Galen Rupp, as I've talked about early on. You know, Galen is so good he's been around for so long but you know he is getting older so there's always that question mark about how is his body going to hold up how is he going to be able to continue on he said this was a huge race for him he wanted to come here and to really have a good race obviously two-time olympic medalist he's got a great personal best he's one of three that have broken 60 minutes ronix kipruto though next to him he's awesome he is someone we are going to see a lot of today and ben true another Really good performance at his first marathon last fall. He's won here before. And as they wait for the gun, this is the most exciting time of the race right here, Sam. 
This certainly is. Here we talked about the adrenaline a little bit earlier, and they're just waiting. They're in their thoughts right now, waiting for the sound of the gun as they're ready to go. You can see the anticipation. The men start a little bit delayed. Bear with us, we are just clearing the roadway. Bear with us, they're clearing the roadway. You just heard it. <laughs> Which is why the, we have the delayed start here to the men's race. Hard to believe it's been three years since we've called the United Airlines NYC half, but it is back and bigger than ever. 25,000 runners, the first full-scale event for the New York Roadrunners since the pandemic began. And the men take their mark as we wait for the gun. On your mark. And they're off. And again, Sam and Kerry, so much importance to the to the pacing out of the gate because you have that adrenaline rush when you hear the gun, but you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself too soon. No, you need to almost just take a breath and let people just kind of relax a mm -hmm. little bit. And then, but you also see like Reed Fisher was in there. He's one of the top Americans. He's smiling and having fun. And you know, there's just different, there's different ways. To, to start the race, but 25,000 people in this race today. Back at full capacity. It's That's so, so great. Fun. As the men make their way from Brooklyn's Prospect Park to here in Central Park, it's all part of this 13.1 mile journey, Sam. It certainly is. This was readjusted in 2018, this course, where it now begins in Brooklyn's Prospect Park. Runners encounter the rolling hills of the park for the first couple of miles. They exit the park, they run around Grand Army Plaza through Brooklyn, and there is the Manhattan Bridge. You know what a bridge is, it's a hill. Up and down the bridge when you Descend the bridge, they're right on Canal Street. That's where you find more energy from the crowd and a fast run up the FDR Drive. You head north, so you have a couple of flat miles from miles six through nine. At the UN, you make that left on 42nd Street. Head your way all the way to 7th Avenue. You see some of the sights and sounds of New York City and Times Square. And then you head north to Central Park. Enter the park. You hit the rolling hills in the park, then 72nd Street transverse, more rolling hills. You come around and there is your finish. Some hills, some rolling hills at the end. You have the professional women on the left, the professional men on the right, and you can watch all of it unfold on the ABC7NY.com app, as well as on the ESPN app. We'll be with you until 8.30 in the morning with live coverage of this great race. We'll check back in with you in just a few, Mike and Tony, but for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. And once again, now that we've got our morning show work out of the way, we are back here on the live stream with the professional women and the professional men making their way to here at Central Park. Let's check in now on the women's wheelchair race. This is Manuela Shar, and she was one of the names that we wanted folks to keep an eye on here this morning, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Manuela is 37 years old, and uh, she uh, she won five medals at the Tokyo Paralympics, so decorated, and then went on to win Berlin, London, Boston. It was a crazy, it was a busy fall marathon schedule. Some of the spring marathons shifted to the fall, so there was a lot of back and forth um, for, 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 these, uh, for the racers, and uh, Manuela really a strong, a strong 2021. You said back and forth. I love that because she she and Tatiana have yeah. flip-flopped for four times here at the NYC half. So she's won here twice. She's also finished second here twice. And, you know, obviously loves to have that competition, but looks like she's well out today again. And we've seen this before, you know, she can get out there and just build these big leads and just hammer it home. And, you know, not a surprise today. She won it in 2018, she won it in 2015. And as we know, uh, Tatiana is the defending champ winning it in 2019. She is looking every bit the eight-time Paralympic medalist and six-time European champion. That she is off to a dominating start is Manuela Shar. Now we check back in on the men's division. And Kerry, as we take a look at some of these big names to keep an eye out for this afternoon, Galen Rupp, a guy we've been talking about a lot this morning. 
Yeah, Galen Rupp, you know, he is the big name, but let's just talk about Kirabel Arasa right here. He just ran his first half marathon at, in Houston, where we've talked a lot about, about, about already with Sarah Hall setting her American record there. But Arasa ran the second fastest debut half marathon ever. So he is somebody to watch. Connor Mance is out there, two-time NCAA cross-country champion, and this is his first time running here in New York City, his second race as a pro on the roads and you know as i said frank lara at the very start to show mcconan we've seen him here before patrick tiernan australian olympian that went to villanova not too far from here uh, i mean so many great athletes steven sambu always runs well in new york city abdi abdi Rahman, he is a five-time olympian you know there's just a you can keep on going 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 Elkana Kabet is having a phenomenal year as well. So we saw our friend Jared Ward up there as well. He was the top American yep. male finisher at the 2018 TCS New York City Marathon. Keep an eye on him as well. Yeah, a lot of new young guys in this race. Nick Hauger is someone that we want to watch. You know, it, it's fun that there's so many athletes to mention. And really, we are looking right now at Capruto, who is, is the guy to watch. Ronex Capruto, he's got a great name, but behind him, there's a lot of guys that can mix it up. 22 Olympians, six para-Olympians, an unprecedentedly deep field here for the United Airlines NYC half. Plenty of big names we've spoken about. Brett Robinson right there on the shoulder of Capruto. He's from Australia. He's an Olympian in the marathon, and he too is a sub-60, which you know, sub-60 is a big thing, and uh, he has already cracked that that mark. He's run 59-57. He's got a national record for Australia. We'll be keeping an eye on the men, of course. Now we check in on the women and carry some of the splits are already in so far. Yeah, they came through their first mile in 533. And then they dropped it down, had a little bit of a descent, 455. Their third mile was 522. So Teferi there leading the charge, Cheptai right there. But then Annie Frisbee. Annie Frisbee, there yeah. she is. She likes to push the pace. And actually, she just ran the 15K a couple weeks ago. And it was humid there in Jacksonville. And she said she needed to relax a little bit. But she likes to be up front. Sarah Hall's in there. Caroline Birkley Gravdal, we've not talked about her. Now, she is someone that has run here at the NYC half in 2018. She was third, and she is having a great year. She just ran the European Cross Country Championships and won, and that's a huge race for her. For her to win that race, it gave her a lot of confidence. She's been up front in that race many years, but for her to crack, crack the tape, she's got a little extra step, you know, pep in her step, I should say. So lots of big names here. Edna Kiplagat in the yellow bib right there. She is so good. She's been around for so long. She's 42 years old. And you know, she is always in the mix. You can never overlook her. So she's going to run Boston. And she's, you know, just somebody that I think we always have to mention. When you hear the background sound, you can hear the gnat sound of the crowd along the course. Yeah. And it's, it's such a welcome sound to hear that, that this is back at capacity. We have the pros and we have the crowd support along the way as well as they were making their way through Brooklyn right now. I think they've missed that. You know, and Tatiana McFadden said that. They've missed hearing all of the crowds. They've missed even just being on the start line with all the, the fun that's happening around the start line with all the masses. So yeah, everyone is excited to be back and everyone's excited to see the racing back. The words she used, she used exciting and emotional. Mm -hmm. She said it'll be emotional out there. You were looking at the professional women on the left and the professional men on the right. And as we watch those races unfold, we check back in on the women's wheelchair race. Manuela Shar having her first race of 2022. You know, we talked a lot about how much they raced last fall. You know, having all the world marathon majors really kind of bunched together. It was a really strenuous fall for the wheelchair athletes. A lot of the runners did not do that. And, you know, I think it's just more of the pounding that the runners have that they can't 
run back to back to back. And, you know, we saw athletes run Chicago and then the next day run Boston. Boston, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Within 24 hours. Actually, Daniel Romanchuk, I believe, had two chairs, one in Chicago, and then his dad had one in Boston. So, I mean, just the logistics of getting all of their equipment from one city to the next, get their mind right, get their fueling. I mean, this is so nice for them to be able to just breathe and race. It's hard enough to to win one of these races in one day, but to have to do things back to back like that, it was it was really nice they had the opportunity, but I think they're happy to be back. And the double norm. the distance in the fall as exactly. well. That was 26.2 miles, 13.1 here today. And as you heard Tatiana tell me a little bit earlier, this is resetting now coming into this after that busy fall, 13.1 miles. Now this is the novice in me coming out. I heard you ladies mention earlier that this is not a fast course. Well, what, what constitutes the difference between the two? Well, there's lots of hills in the very beginning of this course. You know, you get to about what miles, I guess, is it six? Yeah. Before you really start to feel the downhill. And so not only are they getting into their race, they're getting into their frame of mind to be running these races, but they're also trying to navigate the course. So, you know, it's a different ball game. When you have flat courses, it's all about pace and obviously winning. Here, you have to figure out how to get through the hills and hope that you don't run too fast too early on because you have to save a little bit for the, the second half, which we end uphill here. So they know it's going to hurt. This finishes in Central Park. The former course would begin in Central Park and you would work your way through the rolling hills of Central Park and the Harlem Hills. You would exit the park around mile seven and then run along the West Side Highway, which was basically flat. Yeah, so that was a wind. Yes, a lot of yes, times. <laughs> yes, this is a different course. Now you run up the east side of Manhattan on the FDR Drive and then you re-enter when you enter the uh, Central Park, it's back to the hills. You agreed with the hills at the start and you have the rolling hills at the beginning, at the end. So if you're a runner, which course would you rather run? Well, that's interesting because I was in the elevator with Galen Rupp and I said, you know, are you ready for a fast, a fast marathon or a hard marathon, a hilly marathon? And he likes to run the fast ones, but I think that he's really excited to do the, the hilly courses because it, it just kind of, it, it breaks things up sometimes. It makes you excited to tackle the next mile or whatever. It just makes you think about things differently. He did run this in 2011, the yeah. old course, and he's not in the lead pack right now, but we will be keeping an eye out for Galen Rupp. Exactly. Brett Robinson pictured the Aussie, one of three men in this field with a personal record that's under an hour. He ran 59.57 in Japan back in 2020. See him there behind Caputo. Sam Chalenga there in third in the black kit. He is someone to always watch. You know, he was so good at the NCAA level. He held the 10,000 meter NCAA um, record for a long time. He went away from the sport. He, he ran a marathon. He ran the 2016 Olympic trials. He was really good and he just went away from the sport. Now he's back and he's really having this resurgence. He's a competitor. And sometimes I think that gets in the way for Sam Shalanga because he does run so hard that sometimes he's not running within himself. But I think he's having a smart day. I'm surprised to see Ronix right here, to be honest. I thought Ronix would take it out and just and try to separate himself. But he's. it looks like he might be getting through the hills, let the flat come, and then really see if he can burn it out. You know, Ronix Caprudo has such pedigree. He is so young. He's only 22 years old. He had his first race here at the UAE Healthy Kidney. He not only set the course record, but he ran the fastest time in American on American soil that year. And he was only 18. He was only 18. So he ran here, then he went to Peachtree, which is in Atlanta, and he broke the record there and he ran the fastest time ever to be on American soil. And then he went back home. And 2019 was a great year for him, but the pandemic was really hard on him. No if, races and still very young. If you look at the left side of your screen, you see the professional women as they're making their way up the Manhattan Bridge. Now, this is a narrow span. If you take a look at it, it's narrow, it's uphill, and then you have the downhill. But this, here's a look, an overview look at the bridge, the Manhattan Bridge. That is the bridge that, when the New York City Marathon, you face five bridges along the way. This is the one bridge that you encounter for the United Airlines NYC half. But, you know, it is a climb. It is a climb up the hill, up the bridge, down the span. And then you have the nice, welcoming flat distance once you get into Manhattan. 
And I don't think we can talk enough about these conditions this morning. 54 degrees, not a lot of wind, ideal for the running of this race today. You know, let's bring you back to 2018, the first, uh, the inaugural uh, uh, look at this new course, and it was cold. I ran that one, and I remember people were the uh, the clothing bins where you take off your, your throwaway clothing, and people were hanging out and taking the clothing out of that and, and trying to double up to keep warm before the start of that. Yeah, we talked about how it was 54 degrees, but and not a lot of wind. And you see that right now, just six miles an hour out of the west. So about as ideal conditions as you can have here for this running of the race on the first day of spring. Mid-March. Spring is uh, upon us. Mm -hmm. Such a good time to be here in the city and such a good time to have 25,000 runners on the streets. The first full-scale event for the New York Road Runners since the pandemic began as we're starting to see more and more signs of normalcy and a nice crowd along the field here today. So a lot to be excited about, and we're happy to be here with you on ABC7 NY and on the ESPN app for the running of the United Airlines NYC half. So as we watch the professional women and professional men continue to make their way from Brooklyn to here in Central Park, we will once again be joining our live audience on ABC7 in New York. We'll have that for you here in just a few minutes, so hang with us. Good morning, Mike and Tony. Yeah, you're looking live at the professional women and professional men as they're making their way from Prospect Park to here in Central Park. The drawing for the RBC Brooklyn half may be closed, but you can still claim in entry by signing up with the New Yorker Runners Team for Kids at runwithtfk.org. When you run with Team for Kids, you not only receive access to perks like a dedicated coaching staff and in-person training runs, but also you'll have help and you also help and inspire runners of all ages by supporting New Yorker Runners youth and community programs. Now we welcome in the fourth member of our broadcast team this morning, Brittany Bell, who's standing by with all the kids in Times Square. Hi, Brittany. Square near mile 11 and we are getting ready to watch the youth race coming through and just one thing a note about today this is the one of only two times that Times Square is closed to traffic so on top of that we're getting ready for the 1500 meter youth race and that's a part of the rising New York Road Runners program so we're going to start this interview first I believe we have Mar Marissa Munoz with us as senior vice president of community impact so Marissa tell us how exciting you are how exciting it is just to get the youth involved and this type of race. Oh, sure. So, yeah, for our young people today, it's incredibly exciting. Um, you know, right now with a race like this, they're able to see all runners of all ages, paces, and abilities complete the half marathon. It's a real inspiration. You know, running also provides the foundational skills to lead a really healthy and active life for them to be lifelong learners. So we're really excited uh, to be here today. All right, and Hudson, you're almost a veteran when it comes to this. How excited are you about this today? I am so excited because I am running in Times Square, which is usually the crowdest place in the world. And like, like only 1,500 people are going to be running, and I'm one of those people, and I'm so honored. <laughs> and Lena, you have run a pretty impressive mile time. What advice would you give to other kids who are just thinking about starting out running who might be a little nervous? Um, I would just say, like, keep trying, because at first I didn't really like running, but the more I did it, I was like, oh, wait, this is actually really fun. And it helped me, like, like connect with my mom more. 
All right, thank you guys so much and good luck. And the, another cool thing about the youth race is that it's going to coincide with a portion of the pro, I believe, wheelchair race as well. So just really awesome. You can just tell by Hudson, they are just ecstatic about this, especially running in Times Square on a beautiful day like this. And we're not seeing the wheelchair, the pro wheelchair man just yet, but you can just feel the excitement as people are lining up, getting ready to cheer all of the athletes on today. Ryan. Thank you, Brittany. I think we found our new favorite uh, runner today. He's so Was cute. Was he great or I, what? I think we found the next Ryan Field. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're excited to be here this morning, bringing you the United Airlines NYC half. Once again, you can watch the race unfold on the ABC7NY app as well as on the ESPN app as well. We will be taking you live until about 8.30. We'll have the finishes of all of these races coming up right here on Channel 7. In the meantime, that'll do it from here in Central Park. Mike and Tony, we'll send it back to you in the studio. And now we're back here on the live stream. And, Kerry, you can see Connor Mance there. In November, he won the NCAA cross-country title. And here he is four months later, mixing it up with the best international runners in the world. What is that like? Well, you know, we are seeing a lot of our NCAA champions in the field. Connor Mance, as you talked about, two-time cross-country NCAA champion. He is so good. He ran 13-10 indoors this year, and now he's tackling the streets. But Edward Cheserek, right there in the orange on the far right, He's won more NCAA championships than anybody, and he is called King Chez. That's what we call him. But, you know, he is so good. He's run 101, but I don't think that is what he can run. I think he can run a lot faster than that. On this course, maybe not so much. But Ed Edward Cheserek, we don't get to see him very much. So we're in a real treat here being able to watch him right up here by Ronex Capruto. Shadrach Kipchichir right back there in the USA kit. He is also a guy to keep your eye on. He is starting to move away from the track a little bit, moving more towards the roads. He's very good over cross country again. You know, we talk a lot about that. I did at the top of the show where, you know, we see a lot of athletes. Like when we get back to the women's race, our top two females are very good over cross country as well. But you're going to see that in the men's side as well. You know, when you can handle the ups and downs, the turns and things like that on a cross country course, New York City is a lot like that. They talk about that all the time, being so strong, being able to recover when you do hit uh, you know, bumpy part of the road or when you have to go up and over these bridges. The Manhattan Bridge right yeah, now, which it we just see. Makes cross country athletes so much they're they're used to the ups and downs and things on a cross country course. So it makes these roads a little bit better. Yeah, we saw the the women on the Manhattan Bridge and now here's the men on the Manhattan Bridge, the incline. It's a steady incline up the bridge as you're looking at the men make their way up the Manhattan Bridge. Eventually the descent into Manhattan, Lower Manhattan Canal Street before they make their way to the FDR Drive for a nice, flat, fast span. But right now, an overview look at the Manhattan Bridge and the lead men. Edward Chedzarek, who I was just talking about, he graduated in 2017. He's really young still, 28, but he has not been able to compete at the World Championships or at the Olympic Games. He's been waiting for a U.S. citizenship. He's from Kenya, and he would like to run for the U.S., and it's been a really hard thing for him to get his citizenship. There have been a many athletes from Kenya that have switched over. Shadrach Kipchichur is one of them who has gotten their, their U.S. citizenship, and, and Edward has not been able to. So it's kind of unfortunate because he's such a talent, but we haven't seen him at the world stage. Ronex looking over a couple times. Well, Ronex knows Edward Cheserek. Everybody in this sport knows him. I mean, he has been so dominant, and he is a guy that is just knocking at the door of being the next great. But I think there is a little bit of something when you don't get the opportunity to wear your country on your chest at a, at a world event or an Olympic event. It's, it's, you almost feel a little lost, and I can feel that for him, but he is, you know, obviously mixing it up with everyone. McConan right there always in the mix at this race he loves this race and we've seen him here phenomenal athlete himself the men just passed the mile five markers they're 
Midway through the span of the Manhattan Bridge, you see the over overview look and no wind, just light, light wind today. I think we looked at the graphic earlier, it said five miles an hour. And that is welcome when you're crossing the bridges and when you're on the FDR Drive as well, which is on the east side of Manhattan and, and on the water. And see the professional women as well. Yeah, Sunbari Teferi, we've talked a lot about her, but the woman on her left, Irene Cheptai, she is from Kenya. She was sixth in the 10,000 in Tokyo. She won the world championships in cross country in 2017, where the Kenyan women went one through six. They swept the entire competition there and won. But again, a very fast, she's got a 1443 5K PR, 3044 10K PR, huge range. She did not race at all here in 2022. Her last race was in December of 2021, where she did run 107.05. So she's in great shape. And you know, she wants to win. That's the thing. She, you know, we talk so much about time now because we have all this new technology that a lot of people like to talk about, the shoes, all of these things. But when it comes down to it, right, we want to win these races. And especially when you win a race like the United Airlines NYC half, it is big. And also getting in with the New York Roadrunners, it's big. You know, there's lots of races that they put on here. And it becomes sort of like a family when you come and run here in New York. Sam Grotewold and everyone that brings these international fields together, they really treat you like a family member. So these ladies are really excited to be here. As we saw, she's making her NYC half debut. How much of a disadvantage is that when you're running a course for the first time, or is there one? Well, I mean, I think there there's a little disadvantage, right? I mean, we know that there are people in this field that have have run very well here. They've been in the top three. They've been on the podium. But, you know, a lot of people come over and they've studied this course. They've watched the coverage of the course and they speak to the athletes that have been here. You know, Sambari Teferi, she is training with athletes that have been over here and we can see their times here. They're, they're pretty consistent in. across yeah, right the board. 515, yeah. I guess, average. So they're locking in and, and you know, I think that the big thing for them is they're studying before they come. You know, a lot of, a lot of people just think, oh, you go and run races, you put one foot in front of the other and that's how it is. Well, no, these athletes take a lot of time. They go home and they figure out how to mimic the race. Um, they try to run the, you know, certain courses at home that will mimic what they have to deal with. So yeah, they visualize, they do everything that they can to be the best. And this brings up a lot of the strategy that you spoke about earlier, when, when are the hills coming and how you have to adapt as the race unfolds. For sure. I mean, they're out doing their tempo runs where they're throwing in hills as they would here. They're trying to figure out how to run the flat while they're tired from climbing hills in this first stages of the race. Then they want to push over the flats because then those, those hills are going to attack them again at the very end, and that's when they have to make moves. So you most definitely are trying to figure out how to practice this before you actually race it. The women's wheelchair. Look about, how about this shot? Coming right through Times Square, as Brittany mentioned earlier, only closed twice a year, New Year's Eve. And right here at the United Airlines NYC half, Manuela Shar, Times Square all to herself. <laughs> And everyone talks about this moment. This is why they love to run here. Going through Times Square, seeing everybody. It's loud because there's people right there, but also it's very eerily quiet. You know, there's, it's just a different feel because you know they're out to watch you race right now. It's so early, there's not a lot of things open. Mm -hmm. And so everyone came out to see the world's best. And that's right where the youth race is, of course, taking place this morning, 1,500 kids. Having a good time in Times Square. Now we check back in on the professional women and the professional men. And here we go. Ronix Capruto is separating himself, which is what we were expecting him to do. I, I thought he was maybe going to get through those hills and then take off. But, you know, he is, his PR is almost two minutes faster than the next. He is so good. Yes, he's young. He hasn't run a ton of half marathons. He's run a few. But... You know, I, I kind of was thinking he was going to take off and try to separate because that's just what he does. You know, he wants to win and he wants to win big. His New York City half debut as well. Just 22 years old. You talk about the youth as the men make their way towards the FDR drive and, and the flat area, the flat course. And now the men's wheelchair about to wrap up. And 
This race started our day this morning. And here comes Daniel Romanchuk. We expected him to be first. And twice as nice, back-to-back -back championships for Daniel Romanchuk here at the United, Air United Airlines NYC half. Made it look easy today, Sam McCary. We had a feeling that was coming. And you look at the time, too, when he won it in 2019. He finished first in 51.35. Would you like? Uh, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Daniel is just somebody that I think is going to be kind of like a Tatiana McFadden. Changed the sport for American wheelchair racing. And when he won the NYC Marathon, he, he was the first American. I think he opened the door and opened the eyes to a lot of people. And now he has so many young athletes training with him. A number of his team, teammates and training partners are still finishing the race behind him. But he's such a kind guy. You know, he wants people to be good. He loves the sport. His family is so excited about it. And, you know, you just want to be around him. His official time, 49.22. More than two minutes faster than what he won here back in 2019. Now Manuela Shar making her way to Central Park after rolling through Times Square. You know, people wouldn't complain about New York City traffic if it looked like this. <laughs> well, Manuela Shar doing the flip-flop again. So now she's on top. Tatiana isn't. It isn't going to be the one to win this race today, but Manuela Shar back on top where she likes to, but she's just had a phenomenal last few years. So dominant. Yes, she's shown that she's human a few times, but she is somebody that loves to break the tape and is so good at racing. You know, she really is very tactical and she gets it. And she's just blowing it away again today and powering home. We're about eight minutes away from the finish of the women's wheelchair race. Shar a winner here in 2015 and 2018 as we check back in on the professional women and the professional men. And Carrie, you kind of hinted at it. This has kind of unfolded the way we thought it would thus far this morning. Yeah, I mean, Ronix is not getting real far in front of those guys. He made that initial move and now he's staying right there. The, you know, they're, they're trying to keep him in distance, which is great because he'll pull them along to a fast time. And, and again, we still have some racing left to be done. So you can't say that he's, he's got it in the bag yet, but he's pushing and he's trying to work this flat part of the course, get back into that rhythm, you know? He's, he's used to running faster. So sometimes it's a little bit of an awkward pace when you're not running your normal 57 minute half marathon pace, which he's not doing today. And once again, just a beautiful morning. I don't think we can stress enough how perfect these conditions are. About 55 degrees, wind just six miles an hour. So the runners certainly take advantage, taking advantage of these conditions. Just a perfect day here in New York City on the first day of spring. You know, just trying to count, it's about a three second gap here between first and our next three men. Here's our 10K split, 28-22. And yeah, two to three seconds, that was a quick eyeball on my part. Yeah, you didn't even have your stop about watch. that. Yeah, yeah, you just eyeballed that. Yeah, That's but great. Edward Cheserick, McConan actually is from New York City. He trains a little bit here and in Ethiopia, but he knows New York City so well. He's in, in third place there. And then Shadrach Kipchichir. This is a guy you got to watch, everybody. I mean, he is such a competitor. He loves to have these sprint finishes. He is so fast over the final one and 200 meters of your race that you never want him on your shoulder because he just unleashes this incredible kick. But he is having a great race today. I mean, you know, they're really, those four are really far out. And I think for Shadrach Kipchichir to be out here up front, he knows how to race Edward Cheserek in the orange there. But this is new territory for him. We see Ronex looking over his shoulder a couple times, looking side by side and then looking over his shoulder. So what is he thinking as he's looking back? Well, I mean, when they're looking back, they're, they're always wondering who's coming behind. But, you know, right now they need to look forward. And, and even Kipruto does. He can hear those guys behind them. And so there's no need to look back. He, he can hear their footsteps. He can hear them breathing. He maybe is just trying to see who the guys are okay. that are acting. Dorian Kale giving her her flag, said she was so excited to see her race. You know, we know that the woman coming behind her is Ian Hoang from US. And she was one that Dorian said, we gotta watch out for her too. So Shar coming off a great Paralympics, having such phenomenal 
pedigree over the course of running on these roads, you know, whether it's the marathon distance or the half marathon distance, but just a fierce competitor. Yeah, five medals from the Tokyo Paralympics. And as we mentioned earlier, she went on to win Berlin, London, Boston. This is her first win here since 2018. She finished in 2018 at 59.57. Conditions perfect today, a faster finish today. 56.12 was her time as we take a look at her crossing the finish line here in Central Park. 56-12, by the way, a full minute better than Tatiana McFadden's run back in 2019. And the thing that always amazes me, Manuela didn't even look like she just ran a race, not even out of breath, just like, <laughs> okay, what's next? So fit, so focused. And now everybody's back together on the men's side. Edward Chedrick right there in the front leading Ronex Capruto. Shadrach Kipchicher in third. And McConan in fourth. There you go. You know, Edward Cheswick is not one to really, he is such a winner. I mean, we talked about his winning 17 NCAA championships, I believe. Um, but, you know, you would think that he would come back up once they regrouped and just sit on Capruto. But nope. He is such a competitor himself. He's, he's a guy that likes to win races, and you can see him. He's pushing the pace. Tafari and Cheptai, well ahead of the pack on the women's side. And if you're these two ladies, Carrie, at what point do you decide you really want to make your move to push towards the finish as well, they are neck and neck here at this juncture? Well, you know, Tafari knows she knows Central Park. So I'm, I'm thinking she maybe is thinking, let's get to Central Park and then we'll work the hills and we'll finish strong there. You know, this course isn't known to be fast, so they weren't coming here to necessarily run a super fast time. They're coming here to compete, to learn what their body can do over this tough course here and to show off in New York City. I mean, that's that's the... Well, they're definitely doing that too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, when you get in with, like I said, New York Roadrunners, there's all kinds of events that you can come and run and these ladies can run all of them. You know, they can run the Fifth Avenue mile, they could run Milrose, they could run um, any distance that they have. And so they want to win. That's the big thing. Time, throw that out the door and just compete. So for me, I think that Teferi probably is just setting herself up to tackle those final hills and to hopefully break away once she can, once she gets to the park. They're on 42nd Street as we see right now, about to make their way towards 7th Avenue, make that left, uh, the right up 7th Avenue and Times Square, where you will see more energy and it will bring them right up to Central Park and the hills. We know that they went through the 10 mile mark at 51.35. And that mile was a 512. So picking that pace up a little bit, they ran the seventh mile in 507. And get this, you guys, we talked about the flat part. Mm -hmm. Their eighth mile was in 501. So they started to really hammer down that pace. They're using, getting, using they're the getting back drive, into the yeah. ups and downs now. So that's maybe where they're adding on to their split. So 5-12 was that last split, but they really had some fast ones in between there. And remarkable, the separation. We showed this low angle view. You don't see any other women even in sight. So these two have really separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Teferi, the pride of Ethiopia. Cheptai from Kenya. And a reminder, we've seen some incredibly close finishes at this race. Back in 2016, Molly Huddle won by one-tenth of a second over Joyce Chepkuri. Molly's at home expecting her first baby next month. We're excited for her, and it looks like we're in for another close finish here this morning. Yeah, Molly is such a big name here, right? She's a three-time winner, but she's also had some really close finishes, and, you know, it's so fun to know that she's back home, not here racing because she's gonna have a baby soon. So shout out to Molly if you're watching today. You know she is. <laughs> but Ronix did not like anyone in front of him. He didn't like <laughs> him. <laughs> when Edric Cesarek was right there in front of her, in front of him, Ronix was like, okay, nope. And as we watch along on the live stream, we're about to welcome in our audience 
on ABC here in New York in just a matter of seconds. All right, Tony and Mike, thank you very much. All right, guys, thank you very much. You're looking at the professional women and the professional men. And Carrie and Sam, we've seen some separation here on both sides. Yeah, on the women's side, 19 seconds up from Sharon Locati, who trains here in Flagstaff, is Kenyan. She's also part of the NCAA championship, um, you know, competitors here in the race. She won when she was in college and is now moving up in distance a little bit. But having a great race here in third place today. And Sinbari Teferi and Irene Cheptai, the leaders on the women's side right now. Ronix Capruto is the male leader at this point. And moments ago in the men's wheelchair race, Daniel Romanchuk taking home the title for the second consecutive year. And Sam, he was impressive today. He was the defending champ heading into this. He won it in 2019, the last time it was raced here. Today, he bested that time 49-22 to finish first here at the United Airlines NYC half. And Daniel joins us now on the microphone. Daniel, congratulations. Yeah, what was you. the key to your win here today? Oh, it's a uh, you know, beautiful day here and uh, just really, really happy to be uh, back in New York uh, racing. Um, it's, yeah, it's been, been a few years since uh, we've been here. Um, really just, just happy to, to be back and to see this, the city so, uh, so alive and uh, just overall thankful to be back. Daniel, you dominated again today. When in the race were you like, I got this and I'm going to do my own thing today? <laughs> Uh, you know, I uh, kind of had a, a plan going in uh, of just saying, you know, just give, give it everything I have. Um, but uh, really, you, you never know what's going to happen in a race until uh, everyone's across the line. Uh, you know, e equipment failure, lots of things can happen. Uh, so uh, definitely not, uh, no, nothing's over till we're all done. Daniel, more than a minute faster than 2019 last time we saw you here in this race, but we saw a busy fall from you as well. So how were you able to take some time off and regroup coming into this after that busy fall? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, I spent some time down uh, in Florida with my grandmother, uh, and so it was great to, to be able to, to get down there and spend some time with her um, and uh, kind of just uh, take a little bit of time off after that. Well, congratulations on your win today, Daniel. Very impressive. Go enjoy it. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Daniel Romanchuk joins Ernst Van Dyke as the only repeat champions of the United Airlines NYC half. And on the women's side, Manuela Schar moments ago coming across the finish line, besting Tatiana McFadden's mark last, or I should say in 2019, by more than a minute. And we see she ran it in 56-12 and carry the top American finisher there as well. Yeah, Ian Woeng finishing in 101.30, a Paralympic athlete as well. And wow, though, five minutes. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You Manuela know. just dominant here today. And surprising we don't see Tatiana McFadden on the leaderboard today. Yeah, I mean, it's different things, different times. She hasn't raced yet. You know, it's, it's tough. Your very first race of the season is hard. You sometimes nail it, and sometimes you just need to figure things out and and get back to some training and no doubt she's in the middle of a big build up for Boston. So, you know, she's she had a good day too. And Manuela Shard joins us now live and Manuela, congratulations on the win. And you talk about perfect weather conditions that obviously helped contribute to this great race you ran here today. We're not sure Manuela can hear us, some technical difficulties. Yeah, Manuela, can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> oh, now she's here. Thank you. Congratulations on your win. Uh, you. Talk about these ideal weather conditions, too, that help contribute to this great run here today. Oh, yeah, it was just perfect. Uh, I remember um, doing the New York City half in really, really, really difficult conditions a few years ago, and today was just perfect. It's warm, it's sunny, so many people out there cheering, so it was just a perfect race for me. Manuela, what is it about New York City? I mean, you love coming here, it seems, and every time you finish, you just have such a big smile. So what is it about racing here? Uh, this city just has these special vibes, and uh, it's just great to be here and to race. Uh, people are cheering, and they, they help you going through uh, this, tough uh, this tough race, so uh, it's always great to, to race here. We saw your success over the summer in the Paralympics. We saw you in Berlin, London, Boston. 
today here, your time of 56 12. Um, this, this was you. We saw you alone. At what point did you feel I have this? Uh, you know, I just wanted to see where I stand. Um, my last race was New York City Marathon uh, in November, so uh, it's always um, difficult to tell where you stand after the winter break and after the build-up uh, during the, the, the cold uh, months. So I just wanted to see where I am, what what do, what I, uh, what work I still have to do until Boston Marathon. So I felt really comfortable and. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy. As well you should be, Manuel. Congratulations on the big win today. Go enjoy it, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Manuel Lashar, the first three-time champion of the United Airlines NYC half. She won it here in 2015, 2018, and now in 2022. Still to come, the finishes on both the professional women and the professional men's side. Once again, you can watch on the app, ABC7NY, as well as the ESPN app, as we're bringing you our exclusive coverage of the United Airlines NYC half. That's the story from here in Central Park for now. Tony and Mike will send it back to you in the studio. Now back here on the live stream, as we help pay some bills, went back to the morning show, checked in with Mike and Tony. Now we're back to the live action and more and more separation on the men's side here, Kerry. Yeah, and you know, not surprising to see Ronex Caputo, but they're still there. He's still looking back. He's still nervous. He's wondering when he's going to actually really put some distance on. But in the last couple miles, that lead has really opened up, Ryan. If you're him this far ahead, you mentioned him peeking back. How often are you looking back at your competition just to see how far ahead you are? <laughs> well, he's done it a lot. We've seen that a while, yeah. <laughs> He's looking a little more comfortable now. But even if you're him, you never, you're never fully confident that you have things in hand, right? At, at what point do you start to feel that way? Well, I think he respects his competitors, you know? And he's young enough to, to I guess, think that maybe they can still catch him. I don't think yeah, they're right. going to catch him because he's clearly such a phenomenal athlete and he's put so much distance on. But I think that this is, that what's interesting is he's not taking looks on the turns. He takes looks on the straightaways. And, you know, if he would look as he's turning, you would think that that would be a little bit more efficient. But I'm not going to say what to do when he's run so fast. <laughs> you know, not Whatever he's doing, it's working just 57. fine. He's the third fastest half marathoner on the planet. I mean, I don't know if we understand how fast that is you know 57 minutes for the half marathon if you are out there racing today or running today you are running with one guy you need to remember his name and you won't forget that name Ronix he will not tell anyone what is behind his name it's like a big secret in this running world everyone wants to know what his name where he got his name and no one knows but there's not a lot of Kenyans named Ronix well, he's making a name for himself today, that's for sure, as he makes his way through Times Square. And on the women's side, Sinbari Teferi, Irene Cheptai, neck and neck, well ahead of the rest of the women's field. And, Kerry, you talked about it. Once they get into Central Park, at that point, maybe you try to make your move, and they've made their way here into the park. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for Teferi to make her move, but Cheptai is in great shape, and she looks good. She doesn't look like she's... Hurting, although if I'm looking right at them, I would have to say Teferi looks as if she's in more control. She's looking at her watch. You know, she doesn't have any grimace on her face, but they're, they're neck and neck. I mean, it's anyone's race right now. There she goes, another glance at the watch, checking her pace, her timing. And then this course, we talked about the finish, the rolling hills here, and there's the, there's the incline in Central Park before you make your way to the finish. We talked about her personal best in the half a little pre, uh, previously, 105.32. And look at the consistency in the splits here, Carrie. 5.11 and then 5.10s across the board for the last five miles. Yeah, and that mile 12, they do have a little bit of a downhill, so they ran 5.02 for mile 12. But this is where Teferi maybe is setting up for her little push. She's got to have a little left in her if it comes down to a kick, because not only do you climb a little bit uh, with the last 800 meters, but then you climb again. Yeah. So you have to have a little left in you. But I am wondering if she's going to try to ha get some little bit of separation here, because let's not forget that... 
Sheptai is very fast. She has a very good 1500 meters. She's also good over 5K. She's run 14.43 over 5K. But Teferi has run 14.15 over 5K. So, you know, all of that can kind of go out the door, but you have to remember that they, they both have wheels. They both are very fast. And it'll be fascinating to watch these final steps being taken, neck and neck, as they make their way to the finish line here on 67th Street in Central Park. I just think Teferi looks so good. You know, she is wiping her eyebrows. She's looking at her watch. She's, she just looks smooth coming down the hill. There's no grimace. Sometimes 800 meters to go here. Sometimes when you come down hills after racing this far, it hurts. It, she looks good. She's setting herself up. But Cheptai is right there. She is hanging right there. on. Another incline making their way through the park. Irene is covering, Irene Cheptai is covering moves. Teferi does not look like she's putting anything really into this race yet that is gonna separate her. But they're moving, 600 meters to go. One, less, one last little decline here before they climb. And it's been a slow grind here. It'll be interesting if Teferi has to really unleash or if Cheptai is gonna here hang on. Here she comes. Yeah. It's back and forth, back and forth. We just passed that 400 meter mark. This is really that mark for all of us athletes where you think of the bell on the track, right? And we're gonna welcome in our ABC7 audience for the finish of this women's race, an exciting finish indeed as it's unfolding here in Central Park. All right, Mike, thanks. The professional women coming to the finish line here in Central Park, and it's Sinbari Teferi and Irene Cheptai neck and neck as they make their way to the finish, Kerry. Let's keep our eye on the clock, everybody. It looks like we might be close to a course record or event record. 107.41 is from Molly Huddle, three-time champion here. Teferi is making her way in, and Cheptai is not letting her go. It's been neck and neck. Keep an eye on that clock. 107.41 is the time to beat. And there she goes, Teferi. And that final push, it doesn't look too dramatic, but it's going, she's going. Senbari Teferi, the winner of the United Airlines NYC half and a new course record to boot. What a finish. Look at that, I mean, she really timed it out, but it was interesting. You know, she was still looking at her watch with about 300 meters to yeah. go. She was still not really knowing where she was going on the course. And now she comes across with a new event record and it was a tight race all the way. I don't know if she thought it would be that tight. But they were neck and neck right to the last, the last few meters. But the new course record there. By six seconds over Molly Huddle, who set the record back in 2016. Molly not racing today. She's at home expecting her first baby next month, but no doubt. Happy for Sunbari to ferry. Irene Cheptai in second place. Just one second off the pace. What a finish, ladies. Great finish. And you know, it, it was clear that they got into the park and that's really where things started to happen. But these two worked really hard together. You know, they had very consistent splits the entire way on the flats. They opened it up. Then they really kind of kept it tight on the hills. And doesn't that, didn't that help contribute to the course record, having For that sure. when they're pushing each other there towards the finish? Yes, so many times you are out there alone, pushing hard, and it was really fun to see them neck and neck the entire way. You're watching live coverage of the United Airlines NYC half here on Channel 7 and on the ABC 7NY app as well as the ESPN app as well. We're with you here until the bottom of the hour. When we come back, more coverage of Eyewitness News. Stay with us. Back here now on the live stream, Essenbari Teferi celebrates her win, and we check back on the men's side, and Ronix Caprudo 
well ahead of the pack now, Kerry. It was uncomfortable and close on the FDR drive, but he has pulled away. He's in the park all alone, and look at that. No need for him to, to look over his shoulder at this point. And this is what I was talking about. Look at his stride here now. He looks like he's in his own, passing Des Linden there. Everybody knows Des. So good over all of the racing here in New York City, but also the Boston Marathon winner. But Ronix Capruto, when he came here and ran his first race in the States, he won here big. Then he went and set the fastest 10K ever on American soil in Atlanta. Now he's back in New York. He's the third fastest ever half marathoner. He is the 10K world record holder on the roads. And now he's running the way we know. He is blowing away everyone. And this is what we all thought he would do today. And we're about to see another new course record, are we not? I think so. Course record. We've only had three winners under one hour, and all of them were at least 59 minutes. And here he is coming up at the 58 minute mark. We'll see if we can make it happen. We've already got one course record here today. Will Ronix Caprudo give us another? So 59 24 is the time to watch, and I do not think he's going to get that. Don't think he's going to no, do it? He'll be closer to the one hour mark, just over with 800 meters to go got you know just over two minutes to run but having a great race and once again we're going to welcome in our audience on channel 7 here in New York for the exciting finish on the men's professional side Ronix Kipruto's coach, Colm O'Connell, is the what they call the godfather of Kenyan distance running. He is so well known. He coaches all of them. Jeffrey Kamrera, who is so known here in New York City. Now, Ronix Kipruto, I'm making his name here in New York. And Ronix in cruise control right now. Yeah, Mike and Tony, and this one's all about Ronix Capruto, who about 10 minutes ago really separated himself from the rest of the field. We won't have a course record on the men's side like we did on the women's, but Ronix still with a very impressive run here today, Carrie. Yeah, I mean, for him to be close to Haile Gebro Selassie, he'll be about a minute off of Haile's time, but what a name. He'll be excited to, to know that we thought that he might have been close to it early on in the race. But it is a hard course. It's a tough course. And it is all about the win. And here he is, Ronix Capruto. Your winner of the 2022 United Airlines NYC half, the first Kenyan to win this race since Stephen Sambu back in 2016. And what a dominating performance today from Ronix. At one point, we had four of the guys bunched together, and then Ronix really took off and took it to the next level. He did, but Edward Cheserek was still in the picture. I mean, he is still there. He's close, and Edward has got to be excited about that, to be that close to a Ronix Capruto, somebody that is so good and is, you know, running his way into the history books at 22 years old. Ronix is 22 years old. I mean, at that age, he could still be in the NCAA system here in the States. So really phenomenal running. Edward Cheserek right there in second place of Kenya. Had a great race today. You know, pushing the pace, Edward Cheserek likes to do that. And uh, I just think these two guys are two names that we all need to know and we all need to watch. They're going to be around for a long time, and hopefully we'll see them many more times here in New York City. As you said, Ronix is 22 years old. You get the feeling he will be back here again to defend his title next year. What a dominating performance 
from Ronix Caprudo. Sam Ryan has made her way out there. She'll be joining Ronix here in just a few minutes with reaction to his big win. And again, ideal weather conditions for those of you just joining us on Channel 7, about 55 degrees, as Brittany Tip spoke about, just six mile an hour winds. So ideal running conditions here for mid-March in New York City. Just a perfect day for this race as we have the first full capacity New York Road Runners event since the pandemic began. 25,000 runners here today. We had 25,000 runners at the TCS New York City Marathon back in November. But this one, full capacity, the first time in three years we've run the United Airlines NYC half, and what a day of racing we have had thus far. That's good fun. There's McConan, who is in third. Edward Cheserek, all smiles. He should, you know. Very, very impressive race today. McConan really having a great race, too. And that's really the best part is watching how all of these finishers celebrate once they make their way across the finish line. Here's the results from the men's pro field. And Ronis Caprudo, seven seconds better than Edward Cheserick, Kerry. Yeah, Shadrick Kipchicher there in fourth leads the American field. Connor Mance. The new name on, the new kid on the block, I should say, Reed Fisher, Via Simbasa, and Ben True. A lot of people know Ben True. He's so good over all of the distances. He's getting a little older, but he's still, still crack, cracking the top 10 here and had a great race today. American finishers four through nine, a strong showing for the U.S. runners here this morning. How about the women's results? As we take a look at Simbari Teferi, the new course record. Irene Cheptai just two seconds behind her. And those two really set the tone here this morning, Karen. They did. They took off and they made it their own race. But Brobdell right there, 108.07. In a new PB, I believe, for her and having a great race today. She was here before and she is going to be back. She's the second fastest British marathoner of all time. And maybe we'll see her in the New York City Marathon. Locati though here, Sharon Locati, she's also an American based Kenyan. She trains in Flagstaff and was fourth. Great race to her. Ronis Caprudo is celebrating his big win. Sam Ryan will catch up with him in just a few moments. What a morning it's been here in New York City. Central Park, the finish line here in the shadows of the legendary Tavern on the Green. Stay with us. Eyewitness News is coming right back. I thought we were thrown to break. I guess not. Now we're back here with coverage of the live stream. Ronis Caprudo celebrating his big win. And you know what? Many athletes have been anxiously awaiting the return of the United Airlines NYC half. It's been three years, perhaps none more so than two young runners from Japan whose chance to compete here in 2020 was thwarted by the COVID pandemic. There's really no event quite like the Agio City Marathon. Uh, the top end, it's the most competitive, deepest half marathon in the world, which is really remarkable when you consider there's no invited elite athlete field. It's all Japanese college kids. So what we try to do with the program here is to bring a couple of the best university kids over to compete, usually in their first international road racing experience at the United Airlines New York City Half Marathon. はい、その件についてはですね、やはり学生たちはここで1位にすごい学生たちの対しても走ることに対する自信、それと自分に対するプレゼント、そういう点では感謝しています。On behalf of New York Roadrunners, it is my honor to invite you to compete in the 2020 United Airlines New York City Half in March. We hope this opportunity will provide valuable learning experience as you continue your athletic careers and inspire the young runners of Japan to follow in your footsteps. Congratulations to you both.
Akira Akasaki and Haruko Nadera learned about the cancellation of the 2020 United Airlines NYC half as they were on their way to the airport in Tokyo to travel to New York for the race. They'll finally make their international racing debut two years later as part of the strongest professional athlete field in race history. ま、そこで、ま、プレッシャーもしたんで、その時から来年の遊びでは絶対ニューヨークに行くんだって思いで1年間やってきてたんで、ま、そういうこけたからこそその今のこの結果が出たのかなっていうのがあります。また海外に行
cop back up, but Ronick Scabruto, he was the man to watch today. He was the guy everyone was looking at. He's the third fastest half marathoner ever, and he ran that way in the final miles. One hour and 30 seconds for Ronix Capruto, seven seconds better than Edward Cesarek. And as we said, Americans four through nine, a very impressive showing for the U.S. runners here today. Yeah, I mean, exciting to see all of these American men run together and run hard. They, you know, Chadwick Kipchichur put his nose in it, maybe faltered a little bit over the final miles, but he was out there racing with those men that he knows that he wants to be like. So that's always exciting. Ben True, the 2018 champion, finishing in ninth. As we look at some of the other finishers, Rory Linkletter, the Canadian finisher in one hour, two minutes and 19 seconds. And now we go back to the finish line where Sam Ryan is standing by with our champion, Ronix Caputo. Sam. Ronix, we saw how close it was, especially along the FDR drive for a little bit of the way. We saw you turn back a little bit too. At what point before you pulled away did you feel that a little more comfortable? I feel too comfortable when I started pushing because I, uh, I didn't want to come to the finish with the guy so that we can we start, we start kicking. It, uh, we saw the finish and we saw the weather conditions. How kind were the weather conditions to this race today? The weather conditions are good, but uh, the course is very too ill. Yeah. Back in 20, as an 18 year old, you came here and you won the United, uh, the uh, UA Kidney Half uh, 10K. Now come back here to win the United Airlines New York City half at 22 years old. Can you talk about coming back here to New York City and winning in your United Airlines New York City half debut? I'm very happy today. I thank God. I thank the race organizer for welcoming me back since 2018. I appreciate it a lot. I want to thank again the people of New York for their warm welcoming to, to me and they cheered me. I say my thanks and wish to come back again. Congratulations, Ronix. Thank you. Back to you. All right, Sam, thank you very much. And we should mention again, this is his New York City half marathon debut. Yes. Not a bad first impression. You said it was hilly. You didn't know about that. <laughs> but I think he did just fine. I think he did too. And he said he's going to be back, and I got a feeling we're going to see him back here defending his title next March. Well, what a triumphant return to the United Airlines NYC half. A thrilling duel in the women's race that went down to the wire. And Simbari Teferi of Ethiopia took the win in course record time. On the men's side, we were just talking about him. Kenyan superstar Ronis Comprudo taking control about nine miles in and delivering a stirring victory. Plus, we saw in absolutely dominant pair performances in the wheelchair races by Daniel Romanchuk and Manuela Shar. Thousands are still out on the course making the 13.1 mile trek from Brooklyn to Manhattan Central Park. 25,000 runners back here today and we've been loving every minute of it. Best of luck to all of them as the miles get harder, but the finish line is oh so worth it. Just a great day here in New York City, on behalf of Kerry Tullifson, Sam Ryan, Brittany Bell, and our entire team, I'm Ryan Field. Thanks so much for watching. Make it a great Sunday, friends.